This is Dave, the guru, and another tutorial using Game Salad. This is part two of our in app purchase tutorial series. So now here we are in Game Salad, and you can see this is our Pocket Pro Shop where you're going to go ahead and make all your in app purchases. Now, a couple of things you need to recognize, and I should point out before we really begin, is that there's a lot of been a lot of debate, or a lot of people have not put in a restore IAP system in their game and what they find out is that they, they get rejected by Apple for not having this this is an Apple requirement and you need to have this ability now I've heard some people say well I don't see it in other people's games well it's there but I think what you're missing is that if other people are making games with Xcode or Corona or something they probably have a pop-up that comes up that has all the different little things on it where you can restore or buy something or do something so you probably don't see that until you purchase something so in game salad you know we way we choose to make our apps is by putting the function right here so and we'll get into that how we set that up so now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go look in our purchase section here and what happens is in this little square when you when you're running uh, the program you'll see our two things that we have in here right now that you can buy and you can scroll through them and when that picture is up there when you hit this button you'll be purchasing that particular item I'm not gonna go into all the code with you of how I did it because there's a billion different ways to do stuff what I'm gonna show you is how when you press something and that's the thing you wanna press um, you set up your purchase so I have some rules here so the first one that we're gonna look at let's just go ahead and give me a second to reorder this stuff as I'll show you in the order that we made them alright so let's just close this so we don't get distracted by that stuff alright so this is our ads off condition and so what we basically have is a is a boolean that says you know when we're on image one you're gonna this is what you're gonna be purchasing ads off it lines up with that logo so when they touch the button and that equals one in here we have our product ID now this is from our last game so what we're gonna see is I modified that so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the modified letters in there PE makes it real easy I try to have a good system this is why SKUs and all this kind of stuff it's really good just to you know everybody's always in a rush and they don't think things out it, this is why it's always good to have stuff planned out especially if you plan on doing this for a while and making more games or doing different stuff you really have to think out how you're naming these things so you have some kind of conventions that you can catalog and keep track of uh, from the get-go and it makes it like this so much easier I don't have to jump through hoops to reprogram my game to do it I can just add two letters so what we're gonna have here is this is our product ID you see I have the caps and and lowercase appropriately matches what I put in iTunes and basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna change this attribute which is a boolean and you don't have to tell it what to change to it'll automatically switch to the opposite of what its default condition is so now if you had other uh, things that you wanted to tell the user you could create other scenes and have it go to those scenes we don't do any of that the uh, store thing that pops up will take care of telling them what it is when they make the tra transaction that it was successful and all that stuff so we're using a non consumable so we're not going to have uh, a consumable uh, checked so now that we've set up the purchase we need to actually set up the condition being saved somewhere now I choose to use tables in this because tables are just so much more reliable and you'll see up here I won't go to it but it's just a basic AIP table with two booleans in it um, and so what we do how I do it is I come down and this is adds off as false in its default condition so when you purchase this and the purchase goes through successfully it'll change to true so I've just made a rule that says when game adds off is true change my table value 
to true and then save it. Now that's unlocked, that's all set up, and that's done. They've bought it, the condition was changed, and I've saved the condition. And then when the game starts, it looks to the table right away at the beginning of the game and changes those booleans from the default condition to what's been purchased as it's read off the table. Pretty simple stuff. And the same thing for my event events. It's the same situation, okay? I've just got to put in my my two letters that I changed. Okay, boom. That's done. Everything's all set. I don't need to change anything else. And our in-app purchase is set up. So let me just go ahead and do a save real quick. So now that I've done that, so when you purchase this, it'll purchase and all that menu stuff will come up with all the descriptions that you typed in. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this restore uh, behavior that we've got to work with to have an Apple requirement. So once again, this is pretty simple stuff. You make a button and you grab the pro game uh, IAP restore behavior right here. And you come in and put in your product IDs. So I'm going to go ahead and change mine to match what I put in. And then you link it to the attributes that are being changed, just like that. And that's it. Now, and you're going to come down here, and, and basically you can copy and bring over those rules like I had before. When adds off is true, resave the table value. When it's this event's unlocked is true, resave the table value. I give it a chance to write, and I usually do a 0.2 or a 0.3 seconds, run to completion, save the table so that I make sure everything gets a chance to scan through the code and everything was written to the table and it gets saved once everything is written. If you don't put it in a short timer, there's a chance that it'll save the table even though everything's linked. It'll jump ahead and save before maybe a condition gets changed. This gives you that extra barrier protection to make sure that your data gets saved. This is important because you don't want customers getting ticked off that they bought something and it doesn't, it doesn't save or it doesn't work properly. So that'll get you by the, the Apple requirements so that, and the reason why they have this is let's say your phone breaks and you get a new phone and you downloaded your, a game, but you didn't have everything backed up to your iTunes. Um, you, when you re-download the app, okay, which iTunes will show that you purchased it, it won't show or give you back what you've purchased through IAP. So you need to put in this restore function so if the, the person has that happen, they can go back and Apple keeps track of what they bought in the app and when they hit the restore, IAP, all that stuff that they purchased that's non-consumable will come back. The consumables will not, but the non-consumables will come back and all that stuff will be in there. That's pretty much all you need to know about working with this stuff in Game Salad, getting it your store set up, getting it set up properly, and getting it set up to meet Apple's requirements. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at sandbox testing on the device for your store. You can find me on the forums under the name Lost Oasis Games. This is Dave, the guru. I'll see you in the next video.